Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. Today we're going to be looking at a book called Tar Zero by Paul Anderson. It was published in 1970 and it won the Hugo Award in 1971. It was based on a short story called To Outlive Eternity that was in Galaxy Science Fiction magazine in 1967. Now this novel is considered one of the early examples of hard science fiction and to understand it you need to understand the two main themes in this novel. First there is no faster than light technology existing in this novel. So the relativistic effects of space travel is a major theme that runs throughout the entire story. The second thing is that this novel is based on the Big Bounce theory of the future of the universe. Now, the Big Bounce theory has since fallen out of favor somewhat because of the observations that we have seen out in the distant galaxies and stars that the universe is actually speeding up. That is, the expanse of the universe is actually speeding up. So it is more likely that we will have a big rip or a big chill. Anyway, let's lay the groundwork for the type of universe that this story takes place in. The story takes place at a time in the future after a nuclear war had happened on Earth. So because of that, the nations of Earth got together and they selected one of their members, in this case Sweden, to be the world's policeman. They gave that nation the authority to go into any other nation and see what type of nuclear technology and atomic technology that they are building and to arrest, lock up and punish anyone that produced nuclear weapons. There are cities on the ground in Antarctica, there are colonies on the moon and on Mars, and it is possible for a person to be a citizen of the world instead of a citizen of just a single nation. The last thing to know is that humans have been to several of the nearest star systems, Alpha Centauri, Epsilon Irindani, and Tau Ceti, among others. They did this using Bassad Ramjet technology. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get on with the story. Nora Christine is a Bassad Ramjet that is about to take off and head to the star system Beta Virginis with a crew of 50 people, 25 men and 25 women, to examine and colonize the third planet of that system. The first chapter introduces you to two of the main characters. The first is Ingrid Lindgren and Charles Raymond. She is the ship's first officer and he's a constable and they meet on earth and they start a relationship, fall in love and decide that they're going to spend their time together on the ship and when they get to their destination. In chapter two, we're introduced to the captain Lars T. Lander and the crew and passengers board the ship in preparation for departure. In chapter 3, the Lenora Christine leaves Earth's orbit and by the time she passes the orbit of the moon, she extends her scoop field webs and placed the Bassad unit in position and truly began her journey to the distant star. Meanwhile, Charles and Ingrid manage to find time to spend together. The ship is now months into its trip and a conflict arises between a few of the passengers. In chapter 5, the ship is now far enough away from Earth that communications with Earth is lost and that depresses the ship's chief engineer, Boris Fedorov. So because he's vital to the ship, Ingrid goes to him and begins a liaison with him to keep him happy. In chapter 6, the relativistic forces that work on the ship while traveling through space is explained. This also explains the title of the book. At the one year mark during the first Christmas celebration, Charles goes to Fedorov's cabin to discuss with him something that the captain wants done confidentially. As he's about to leave, an obviously nervous Fedorov, Ingrid walks in. The jig is up. 
and although she professes her love for him, he ends their relationship. It was the third year ship time and the tenth year earth time when the ship ran into trouble. By then, Charles was living with Shi Yueng Ailin. Chapter 7 They discovered that they were going to hit a small nebula. The nebula was moving abnormally fast, and they were moving too fast to avoid it. In 24 hours ship time, they would hit it. Chapter 8 Most people strapped themselves into their bunks and waited for the collision. And when it came, most of them blacked out. Chapter 9 the collision destroyed the ship's decelerators, so now they couldn't slow down. They were unable to turn off the accelerators because if they did, that would deactivate the magnetic fields that protected the ship and the gamma radiation hitting the ship would fry them in an instant. They also couldn't send robots out for the same reason. As despair began to set in, Charles had an idea. Chapter 10 since it was hydrogen gas in interstellar space that powered the ship, they had to find an area of the universe where the gas was virtually non-existent, and that was out beyond the local galactic cluster. But that was over 6 million light years away. They would have to increase their speed closer to the speed of light. And that would mean that they would need to begin traveling through the areas of the galaxy where the gas was the thickest. And as they got closer to the speed of light, the chipboard time would get smaller while the time in the outside of the ship would increase. And that would allow them to reach the area between the Virgo supercluster and our local galactic group. Within two years ship time or on the outside, six million years Earth time. Chapters 11 and 12. Charles comes up with a scheme to help keep hope alive within the people aboard the ship. He will turn the captain into an unapproachable person whose only job is there to save the ship and the people. Ingrid, the first officer, will become the one who dispenses benign justice. And Charles will become the one who cracks the whip. Chapter 13. The ship swung around the Milky Way and then dipped through the middle of the Milky Way where the gas is the thickest. Low wind tar all the way. As the ship prepares to dip through the middle of the galaxy, a scientist named Elof Nielsen is wallowing in self-pity because while he is a brilliant man and he is vital to the survival of the ship and the crew and passengers, he is also arrogant and not very attractive and no woman wants to be with him. So Ingrid takes it upon herself to be with him so that he could come out of his funk and help the ship survive. Chapters 15 and 16. The ship, as it moved out of the center of the galaxy into the outskirts, the instrumentation showed that the area they were heading to, the gas was not thin enough. So they would have to go even further to the space between the superclusters if they were to find an area where the gas was thin enough for them to be able to go outside to make repairs. So that meant that they would now have to increase their speed and lower their tar so that they can survive to get there. It took them a month to get there. They went outside and made repairs. Chapter 17 and 18. So after they finished their repairs, they were in an area where the gas was so thin that they were unable to either speed up or slow down since they need gas to do that. So they drifted at their current speed for several weeks in weightlessness. Then observations showed that at their current speed, even if they were able to begin slowing down, they would pass through the upcoming supercluster and then they would end up slowing down into intergalactic space where they would die of old age before they got to the next supercluster beyond. So they would have to begin speeding up 
and trying to lower the tar even more. And since staring at that speed was impossible, they would have to wait until a supercluster appears in the right configuration that would allow them to be able to slow and still remain in a galaxy where they can find a new home. And that could take billions or tens of billions of Earth years. So they needed to bring their tar down even lower. By this time, Charles was effectively the captain in all but title, and people came to him to solve their problems. Only Ailing saw the pressure that Charles was under, so she brought Ingrid to him because she knew Ingrid still loved him and gave Ingrid the gift of spending one night with Charles. Chapters 19 and 20. Observation gave astronomers suspicions and further observations confirmed it. The universe had stopped expanding. They had moved so fast that they had reached a point where the universe was no longer expanding and had now begun to contract. They now realized that they would not be able to stop before the death of the universe. When it was determined that they would not be able to stop before the end of the universe, they decided that they would try to ride it down until the universe became a singularity. They believed that it was possible that there would be a cloud of hydrogen around that singularity that would enable them to circle that singularity until it rebounded into a new Big Bang. And then they would ride that wave out into the new universe. Of course, no one knew if this would work, but life went on and a baby was born on the ship, a little girl. Chapters 21 and 22, it worked and they rode around the singularity in the hydrogen gas that surrounded it. And when the singularity exploded into a new bang that created a new universe, they rode that wave out and began to slow down. The ship began to slow down and it took billions of years to slow down while galaxies began to form in this new universe. And they looked for a young galaxy and in there they looked for a sun similar to what they had at earth chapter 23 they found a world similar to earth but it wasn't earth it had blue trees and blue grass and creatures that look like dragons so 50 people 25 couples set about to recreate the human species and to become the elders in a new universe and that's how the book ends. In this novel, no one dies. There is no great battle in space, no great empire to be conquered. It's a novel where people are fighting for survival and they succeed. And I highly recommend it. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching and listening. And please subscribe and hit the notification bell and give us a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.